Okay, it's another day, and as you can see, I think I have my four-digit counter actually working now, and I had so much trouble. I was using these chips for the timer on this side, or the counter on this side, because I only have two of each kind of chip in, that, uh, in my TTL kit. I couldn't use the same two counters here, over here, because I only had two of them, so I found these other counters. I gave up on these 192N counters and switched over to the 162N counters that I had, which uh, I remember seeing on a prior video, I debated between using the 160N or the 162, and I happened to pick the 160. The data sheets for them seem to be identical, at least from the HLF brand. Someone in the comments mentioned that a difference between them is that this the 162 will only clear on a clock pulse, and the 160 is asynchronous and clears whenever the signal is uh, low. I guess that's the only difference. The other, Otherwise, the pinouts were the same. So I just used that, and I hooked that all up. That does mean that I don't have a solution for clearing this when it first turns on, so it starts with garbage. But at this point, I'm just happy that it works at all. I'm not sure what to say about this, other than it took me a good six hours to try and figure out what was going on with these chips, and I never did figure it out. I was seeing all sorts of strange behavior, but one of the biggest ones that was strange was that I had the two counter chips installed over here, and I had the timer, the, the clock pulse going into the up counter of this, the first chip, which is the ones place on my number. And for whatever reason, it was always counting by two. And I, I cannot figure out why that is. If I would turn the power on and off, sometimes it would start on an odd number, like one or three. Sometimes it would start on an even number. Depending on what number it started with, it would sometimes skip the nine digit. And when it skipped nine, then the ripple didn't work either. I, I don't know, complete mystery. And the other weird thing is that I could watch the digits change over here, and, and it really would only change five times before rippling to the next digit. The most bizarre thing to me is that the second chip in the line, which was the same kind of chip, would actually be fine with that, and it would count up by one normally, just fine. I don't understand what was wrong there. Maybe I'll see something when I finally go to edit all of this together. I'm not sure. I haven't done any of that yet. So if I do notice something, I'll probably put a note on the screen or something. But I don't know what was going on there. I also noticed a couple of times where just touching one of the chips would cause the digits to flail all around and change rapidly, which seems like a problem. But I, I couldn't figure out why that was occurring either. I, I tied all the inputs to something, you know, to, to high or low and, and didn't let anything float, and it was still doing it, and it was only doing it on the second chip, not the first one. I tried swapping the chips around. The behavior remained the same. I tried feeding the clock pulse from the first chip into the second chip instead, so you know, leaving it all connected but sort of bypassing it. The second chip would count up fine by one, you know, as expected. I really don't understand what was happening there, but... In any case, I find, you know, I disconnected this, all of this, and reconnected it multiple times, assuming that there was some wiring problems, perhaps. I, re I rewired the whole thing. Uh, couldn't figure it out. And until I switched it to this other chip, the 162N, I was having no luck. So anyway, after I switched it to the 162N, I chained those together roughly the same way I had them chained on this side, and then it started to work. This, in this would increment, the next digit would go up and so on. And that was all good. But I was having some problems carrying the digit beyond the second one over to here. And so I tried to, to color code this a little bit, but I'm, it's going to be hard to explain it, I think. So, so what happens is, is the clock pulse now goes to both sides and is shared on all of the clock pins for my counter chips. So they're all getting pulsed at the same time. And on the first digit, on the ones digit, I have enable, enable P, which was like the counter enable pin. That one here is permanently tied high, so this one's always enabled, so every pulse it counts. When it has a ripple, that shows up on the output on this pin here, so now that follows the black line to the next chip over, which I connected to the enable P line on the second chip. So since they're always getting the clock pulses, this one will only be enabled when this chip is ready to roll over. So then on the next pulse, 
then the second one counts and that causes the digit to increment here to one, for example, and this one to roll over from nine to zero. So I chained it that way all the way down the line. I chained this chip through this long connection here all the way over here and did the same thing. That's tied to the enable pin and then it's uh, carry is tied to the enable pin on the next one over. But I was having a problem where uh, initially I had the enable T, which is the ripple carry output enable pin that I remember being very confused about on an earlier video. Initially I had that just forcibly pulled high on, on every chip here because I figured why wouldn't you want to carry it. The issue happened because of this one, the second digit. When the second digit reached nine, the ripple output carry bit would stay high the whole time nine is being displayed. So it's almost like that's, you know, for, for me, it's almost like it's like a preemptive signal. You know, it's like it's saying the next digit you should roll over. So that was causing problems because then this being carried over here with the enable pins permanently tied high over here, this one would tick every time this one ticked which of course is, is wrong. So I, I, I discovered through a lot of trial and error that the enable carry bit, uh, that enable carry pin needs to also turn on and off. And so I, I did that by tying the enable P and the enable carry together. So they only, it only enables the carry that first time when something comes over. The logic of it is hard to follow and I, it'd probably be easier if I could draw it out. But the end result is that everything carries correctly and they all update one by one at the correct time. So even when I'm running it, you know, pretty quickly, you'll see when it, when it rolls over, like from the nines, they switched all at the same time, all across, which is really great. Uh, Initially, without some of that carry enable stuff, there would be like, like, like sometimes they would increment on a nine and then stuff was just slightly out of sync. You know, if it was running fast, you didn't really notice it. But as soon as you slowed it way down, you absolutely notice it. I don't know if I explained that very well, but the logic of it seems to work out. And I now have a four digit counter that can count up. Unfortunately, it starts with garbage when you turn the switch on, but you know, it works pretty well. I mean, it's it's pretty cool, uh, despite that. Another thing that I, I realized the other day is that I had originally decided to do four digits here in part because I had plenty of these displays, but also because I thought I had four of the drivers for them. And that doesn't make sense because that kit has only, it really only has two of every kind of IC. And I didn't really realized that at the time and it turns out that these display drivers are not actually the same and that I got them mixed up at some point. So this one's an, a 74LS48N and this one is a 74LS248N and I completely failed to notice that extra two in there and it turns out that one of the key differences between these is how it renders the six. So if you'll notice here, this six has the upper bar, which is a lot nicer, and this one doesn't. Yet my wife actually noticed that when I was showing her the circuit, you know, watching it count, and she was like, why does this one have the line? And all this time staring at it, I never even noticed it. So that's pretty funny, but the, uh, but, but that's the only reason that this ended up working out is I did have four of them, but they are different versions, and I didn't even realize that. So they're hooked up, and I happened to mix them up, so there's one on each side. The moral of the story here probably is that I probably shouldn't have attempted to do a four-digit display from the beginning because I, I only have two of, of the required chips. But I guess it was a bit of a learning experience. The one thing that kind of remains here that I'm not sure what to do about is how I would hook up the reset circuit because the way I had the reset previously was that relatively simple RC circuit that just held the resets low for a few milliseconds when power was turning on. I don't know how that would work with the fact that these counters have a synchronous reset and these don't. Like these, these you could probably hold low and just let them stay reset until, you know, until whenever this one released. But I don't know how to actually hook something like that up. My, my feeling is that maybe 
an RC circuit could still work where it's fed from the timer's pulse, perhaps, so that essentially that it only happens once. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to go about it. You could put your ideas in the comments section for how how you how you go about resetting something like this, I, because I honestly have no idea. I guess in summary, uh, this is really neat. I wish I could have shown maybe a little bit more of the debugging process, but it just took so long and then I wasn't recording, so I missed a lot of it. But and I and the the bummer, the bummer for me is that I still don't actually know why these why this approach didn't work where I had these chained together. Because based on the data sheets for this one, I kind of got the impression that one of the purposes of this chip is so that you can more easily chain them together. But I don't know. I must have been doing something incredibly wrong or there was some kind of voltage level thing it, it really you know it acted a lot like there was switch bounce on the input but the complete mystery there is why it was always exactly two and why i could move my timer input from one chip to the other and the behavior would completely change i don't i don't know complete mystery there um probably Maybe I bumped up against the edge of, you know, some whole realm of things that I haven't even learned about yet. That's a possibility. Well, I think that's it for this video and for this particular project. I'm not sure what I'll do next or if maybe, you know, maybe I'll continue with the reset circuit. It, it kind of depends if I get some good ideas or how hard that looks, but I'm probably going to move on to some other idea, maybe do something else now that this has gotten pretty elaborate. I'm almost sad to take this apart, though, because it's such a large build but i don't have the equipment to, to leave them together so whatever we do next it will probably mean disassembling this unfortunately anyway i hope that some amount of this video at least makes some sense i it's many hours of footage now and i'm not sure how it will work when i edit it together but hopefully it'll be okay all right if you like this kind of stuff then uh, please thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and you know, if you don't care, then do the opposite. And I guess that's all for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.